Okay, we're going to go over finding the future value of a lump sum and we're going to compare two investments where they have different compounded period, compounding periods. Um, let's go ahead and read the problem. Stacy invested $950 five years ago. Her investment paid 7.2% per interest compounded monthly. So if we look at what it looks like, uh, it says she she uh, invested five years ago, but to us it's a present value because we're trying to figure out the future value. The future value is now, so that might be a little bit confusing. So she invested five hundred or nine hundred and fifty dollars five years ago. The interest rate's seven point two percent counted monthly. What's the future value of that? Okay, so that might be confusing because that's present value even even though it's the past, right? And we're trying to find out what it's worth right now. So you have to kind of shift the time on us. Shelly invested $900 at the same time. So I should have had a 900 here, not a 950. Sorry about that. But Shelly's investment are an 8% compounded quarterly. How much is each investment worth today? So we can go over here, we can say given. And we can say present present sorry present value Shelly uh, how can I do that we'll go PV and I'll go S okay PVS is a negative nine nine fifty put a dollar sign and RS is seven point two percent and and it's monthly, so there's 12, comp 12, and I want to leave this separate, right? 12 compounding periods per year. And, and, uh, and Shelly is five years, okay? And we have PV. Maybe I should put this ST, right, for Stacy. This is ST, ST, and here I've got SH for Shelly. Well, PV Shelly is a negative 900. You remember, this is 900, and I made a mistake right here. This should be 900. Okay. And our Shelly is... 8% with it's quarterly, so it's four compounding periods per year. And and Shelley is the same, it's five years. And we want to find we want to find uh Future value, future value for Stacy, what that is, and we want to know the future value value for Shelly, what that is. Okay. Now, if you wanted to subscript these, you could highlight them. But you can shift, you know, click right here, and then hold on Shift and hit the right arrow twice, and then. Um, you go in here into font and hit this little down arrow. And subscript is right here, right? Okay. And you go OK. And the same thing here, you could highlight this and go here and go subscript. And that way it looks a little bit nicer. So now you can click here, hold shift, hit the right arrow. Now, um, One thing you can do, a shortcut, you can highlight it again, hit the right arrow twice, I can go, go control shift F for format, and then control B, or alternate B, I mean, I'm sorry, an alternate B, and then hit enter. 
it does the same thing. So let me do that again. I'm going to go here. I'm going to hit hold the shift down. Hit the right, hit right arrow twice. You can go control, shift, F for format, alternate B for subscript, and then enter. Okay. Again, shift, right arrow twice, control, shift, F for format, alternate B for subscript, enter. Control, shift, F for format, alternate B, enter. Oop. Control, shift, F for format, alternate B, enter. And then Control Shift F, Alternate B, Enter. Once you get good at it, it's very easy to subscript if you remember that. Shift, right arrow twice, Control Shift F, Alternate B, Enter. Okay, so that just makes it look a little bit nicer because we have the subscripts that way. So now we'll do the solution. Um, so the solution, I'm just going to highlight these and I'm going to go copy. I don't have to type them again. I'm going to paste them. And I'm just going to do this. Uh, we'll go ahead and do it with a formula. Or with a, with the with a formula first. Okay. So what we're going to do. But the thing is, if you're going to do it with a formula, you need this formula and this formula. Also, you need to know this. You need to know this. Okay. So what you have to do, I'm just going to do it, and then I'll explain how this works. So if I'm going to use it with a formula, I'm going to go equals. Now, if you're using an algebraic formula, the arrows aren't going to flip like this. So in order to flip them, I'm going to have to put a negative sign to start out with. And the first thing we have in here is the present value. So for, for, for Stacy, the present value is equal to this right here. And then we're going to go times. Um, it's going to be 1 plus. So I'm going to go parentheses, 1 plus and now here we're going to be careful r we just can't put r in here because you're going to take the stated rate and divide it by the number of payments per year so it's going to be equal to the stated rate divided by the number of payments per year okay and then i'm going to take it to the power the number of periods you got to take it times the number of periods times the payments per year so there's going to be parentheses okay is going to be 5 times 12. Okay. So I had to divide the interest rate and take n times. We had to divide the interest rate by the compounding periods and take n times the compounding periods. Okay. And then if I hit enter, it gives me the answer. Now I want that dollar, so I'll just go ahead and click the dollar sign. Okay. Now for, for now what I could do, we'll just do it again. So I go equals. So for, for Shelly, it's going to be a negative this, because remember, when you do it algebraically, it's not going to flip this. Okay, it could be time parentheses, 1 plus. Again, we're going to take this interest rate divided by the number of compounding per periods per year, close the parentheses, take it to the exponent, go parentheses, and it's going to be this many years times the compounding period. This many years, C7, times the number of compounding periods per year. Close the parentheses. And we can copy this format by clicking on it. Going format, enter. Boom. Okay, so those are the two answers. So which one is a better investment? The 950, even though it's a smaller, smaller interest rate. But sometimes it's hard to tell, right? The compounding periods and that, so you have to actually figure it out. Now we can also use the, the Excel formula solution. Excel formula solution, I'm going to go ahead and copy these. So it's going to be equal to the future value, parentheses. It's going to come up with the first thing it wants, the rate. I remember the rate. We have to take this rate and divide it by 12, right? Number of periods, you got to take these many years and take it times 12. The payment, there's no payment, right? We don't see any payments in the cash flow diagram. And then the present value is going to be the 950. I close the parentheses, I hit enter, and I get the same answer. 
Again, we're going to go equals, future value, parentheses. The rate is going to be this divided by this, parentheses. The number of periods times the number of compounding periods per year, parentheses. No payments, so I'm going to skip it. The present value is here. Close the parentheses enter. So you get the exact same answer, right? The same answer. All right. Um, um, using the HP 12C, you would go, so we'll, we'll say HP 12C solution. What you would do is you want to say, uh, you want to address N, right? And I'm going to take this uh, yellow off, right? N, and also you don't want this to be yellow either, right? So we have n, and your calculator has it in this order, n, and then i, and then present value, and then PMT, and then uh, future value, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on 18. I'm going to right click and go insert to add a row. I'm going to see this is Stacy, and this is Shelly. Okay. How do you spell Shelly here? Yeah. Okay, so both of these are five years, right? But the way you want to do it, you want to go equals. The n is five times 12, right? And this is equal to five times four, right? So I'm going to go equals. Oh, made a mistake here. There should be a five here. So I'm going to go equals five times four. And then for i, this is equal to 7.2 divided by 12. Remember, we're doing these two things here. And this is equal to 8 divided by 4. So these you multiply, these you divide. The present value is going to be equal to the 950. This is equal to the 900. The payments are zero in both of them. And these are the ones we want to find. So let's go ahead. Uh, I'm going to go to my syllabus. Now, those of you that don't have, uh, those of you that don't have uh, my class, you could just download this HP 12C on your smartphone or do a search for it, or just not do it. You can use your own financial calculator, whatever you want to do. But I'm doing this with HP 12C. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to my class. Hold on. Take me a second to pull the calculator up. And I want to go, I'm going into one of my finance classes. And if you go to you go to my syllabus, if you scroll down, just click on this calculator and I'll bring up the online calculator. Okay? So so we're just going to address each one of these keys for Stacy. So N is 60. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear my finance. So I'm going to go F. And I'm going to clear my finance because it's the F is that I want to look at the yellow. The yellow is clear finances right here. And I hit clear X just to make sure. So I'm going to go 60. I'm going to enter it into N. My next number is 0 0.006. Okay. Um, Really, I'm going to highlight these two and just make them percent so I can see, and then take them out a couple places. So it's 0 0.60 percent. So I'm going to go 0 0.60 for the interest rate, and then the present value is a negative 950. So I'm going to go 950 chain sign present value. Zero is a payment, and then I'm going to just get FB to solve it. So we had FB is $1,360.20. So this is 1360.20. Right? And we're going to make that dollars. And then the next one, we're going to clear the screen. So I'm going to go second, finance, clear finance, clear this. Um, so now we're going to go back. Now N is 20. So I'm going to go 20. And because remember, it's quarterly payments now, all right? So that's four times five is 20. And I 
is 2%, okay? Because 8, 8 divided by 4 is 2%. So I'm going to go 2%. And the present value on this one is, is 900, right? That's what we have right here. So I'm going to go 900. Chain sign, present value. Zero is a payment. And I'm going to solve for future value. 1337.35. 1337.35. Okay, so that's so now what I can do just to distinguish. I'm going to hold down. I'm going to hit Given, and I'm going to hold down Control and click on Find Solution Excel Formula. So I'm going to click on all five of these subsections. And I'm going to make them bold and underlined, so I can see kind of distinguish what I'm doing here. Okay, so hopefully that helps, and thank you for watching.